very first one is about the negative chatter that also um, often comes up in people's minds when they think about decluttering. So they either think, they can think things like, um, how did I ever get in this position in the first place? Or how am I going to get rid of anything? Or, yeah. you know, where am I going to start? And their mindset just starts to go a bit skewy. So I know you've got some beautiful techniques and things to help people. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you'll have heard me say this before, I'm sure, Sarah, in the, the four years since we've uh, <laughs> virtually known each other. But w one of the things I love to say and remind people and remind myself of is when you're on the precipice of great change, fear speaks loudest. Okay, mm. so of course, we can apply this whether it's relative to decluttering or whether it's relative to getting a new job, getting healthy, deciding, oh, I don't want to be single anymore, wh whatever it is. And so the things that I'm probably going to share today, you're going to find what, what you can use across the board. So Great. It, it makes yeah. sense, right? Clients message me all the time. Um, oh, I, I'm doing X and then my mind's come in and said, why? And I'm like, great if your mind is bombarding you with things like you said oh god how did i get here in the first place why am i such a uh, in such a state in my life what's wrong with me where do i start this is a really good sign okay one i would say understand that it's part of the course when you understand that it's part of the course as and when it comes up you don't freak out and think oh no and 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 believe it that's the thing you don't start believing it so anytime you're going to make a change decluttering is just one of them your mind fear ego is not going to like it that's just yeah. part of the course so please please understand this um so start from from that um from that perspective and everything becomes easier and it's also about not i talk about this a lot it's the circular reasoning of that voice that voice is the same voice that says oh you need to buy um this you know whatever it might be for your kitchen item of clothing it's going to make you feel happier and then once you've bought all the stuff that it's induced you to buy and then you try and declutter, it says to you, what's wrong with you? Why have you got all this stuff? <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Um, and, and it just has this circular crazy reasoning. So it's about learning to no longer take instruction from that voice. Some, some people watching this don't even know that it's not them. They just think it's, it's who they are. It isn't. It's a voice that we all have. So when it comes up, it's normal and go, yes, this is a good sign. Reframe it. Okay. Beautiful. If you listen to that voice and it says to you, oh God, why have you bought all this stuff, Sarah? What's wrong with you? You should know better by now. It's going to perpetuate the very situation that you're trying to extract yourself from. But when you reframe it and go, amazing, I've triggered my inner critic. This must mean I'm about to do something freaking awesome. Yes. Just completely make that paradigm shift. And then I think when you're not listening, or not I think, but I know that when you're not listening to that voice, when you understand it's normal, when you lo no longer take instruction from it, when you understand that it's what it's saying is, is, it's not that it's not necessarily true. It's pretty much invariably, if not invariably, entirely BS and incorrect. Yeah. Um, then you, you aren't shackled in the, all of the negative emotions, the barrage of them that come along with listening to that voice. Um, I don't know if, if, I don't know if you know, Sarah, of a woman called Byron Katie. Do you know her and her work? Yes. So Reese. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. so in, in essence, what she talks about is is this process called the work, this practice called the work, and it gets you to see that when you listen to that voice, you, you, how you feel is responding to that. So if you listen to these neg this negative narrative about yourself, you're gonna start to feel despondent and depressed and low, not because of the clutter, but because of the clutter in your mind that you're taking mm. instruction from. Um, and that's what thwarts you. Once you start to see, that's just a thought. 
it's not true and it's probably completely opposite of truth and actually um one of the things i love that tony robbins says is take those thoughts you know like oh um i'm never going to get this done what what's the opposite of that i'm going to get this done and it's going to feel freaking amazing so once you free yourself from, from taking instruction from that, it frees you up to actually get going. We each of us naturally have this wellspring of enthusiasm and inspiration that flows to and through us at all times. And it only doesn't, or we don't really fully feel it when we think there's negative thoughts. So banish those and then it frees you up to, to get started. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I love it. I love it. I love the reframe. Absolutely. Thank so you. powerful. So reframes are so yeah. powerful. What I've realized is that if you give those thoughts an inch, they, they, they totally take a mile and you get caught up in the mind web. So anything that stops it straight away, that stops it in its tracks, and a reframe is one of those, it's so yeah. powerful because it literally arrests those, those thoughts and it stops that entire deluge that... Um, you, you just drown in if you if you allow it uh so yeah. it's like really 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 powerful relative to decluttering or anything anytime you can reframe it um is really powerful beautiful thank you and another tip you gave me which i have followed was to yeah. give my inner critic a name oh yeah. and i tried it first <laughs> of all and it didn't work for me because i gave it a female name and then I was listening to you and someone else and um you'd reverted the sex so I made it a male name and as soon as I did that uh, it helped so much because it separated me from those thoughts it was no longer me it was it was a different so that's another tip that I that you've given me that um has really helped with the mindset yeah, you're right. And it's interesting you say that, Sarah. I, I thought we were going to go down a whole sexist <laughs> rabbit hole then, but thankfully <laughs> oh, not. Yeah. But, but it's amazing that you said that, that that was, that was what allowed the penny to drop for you to, yeah. to create that sense of separation, yeah. which, is, which is what it's all about, which is what I was speaking to really, you know, just a moment ago, is that seeing what that voice says isn't necessarily, and it's pretty much never true, and it also isn't you. So, um, yeah, and, and, that, and that's a really useful reminder. That's such a helpful tool also. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. All right. I'll second... say hi to Bruce, because that's yours, isn't it, Bruce? Yes, Bruce. <laughs> it's Bruce, yes. And I gave him a whole persona, and that really helps as well. I think, bless him. Thank you very much, but I'm not going to take that today. <laughs> I love it. I, you, you probably know that I've done this a lot with children and yes. they come up with some amazing stuff because their imaginations are generally so fertile and it's hilarious yeah. that, that what the, the names and the personas that they give to their inner critic. And also, um, relative to this and everything, bringing in that lightness and that, um, that sense of humour that tends to go hand in hand is also enormously helpful because when, when we lighten up about things, we, we're tuning into really the opposite of that voice. We're tuning into our own soul, to our inner wisdom. And that part of us, um, I always think of, you know Mary Poppins when she did the spoonful of sugar and she like clicked oh, her fingers yeah. and like, um, imagine, imagine tuning into that essence. And actually, yeah. all jokes aside, when you, when you bring this humor and this lightness to the situation versus, oh no, what's wrong with me? I'm such a loser and so on and so forth. Everything does go a bit more kind of Mary Poppins-esque and your, yeah. your own inner wisdom will come up with ideas like you might remember, oh, there's this place that comes and collects stuff for free or there's a site that I can use. Like all of the solutions are there, not when you're yeah. listening to that, that, that barrage of, of negativity from the inner critic <laughs> yes that is so true it's so true it does it really opens up your mind yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful thank you